Hello, and welcome to Painting Our Monsters. This week we're going to be painting an energetic orb giant. This thing's been roaming the countryside, causing all kinds of problems, but some people built a robot to contain it, and we're going to paint that robot today. Uh, let's go ahead and get right to it, and I hope you have a good time with me today. Here we go. So I painted this uh, Milky Way sky last week, and you can see that in my previous video of how I did that process. And the first thing I knew is that I wanted this here uh, red orb to kind of give some balance there. So I just dropped that in, and this is just laying in a quick idea of what the paint is going to be. So you can see I gave that guy some structure. We got a landscape in the background. We got a big old tree, and we got that foreground. And I love the reflection. So now that we kind of have an idea of where we're going with it, we're just coming in over the top of that old underpainting and we're just adding in a little detail. Now I think this uh, this energetic orb giant, you know, he's been out here causing all sorts of trouble for a long time, I think. But, but where he goes, he's trying to absorb some energies, destroy some energies. You know, he's just out there floating around. And so, uh, we, you know, it, it kind of gets to be causing some problems for people. You know, maybe a herd of cattle been turned to skeletons or... Maybe a whole forest was burned down. There's no ash left. and So, you know, people uh, noticed that maybe they had to kind of contain him somehow. So they built this machine here. And uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're working on. Now, I really love building robots and machines because you're mostly just working in gray. So it's a, it's a real good opportunity to practice uh, doing a little bit of shadow just by coming on these different colors of gray here. So... Right now we're just kind of putting in the basic structure of this robot just with all one color and all that is is just a black and white mixed together with a little bit of silver for fun and I'm just coming in and putting in basic shape where it's gonna where I want him to be. You can see that he uh, he changed from the original underpainting. I was imagining more of a spider like creature but when I come in here it was just it was just this is what was speaking to me. So now you can see I came in with a little bit of just darker gray and that's just gray mixed with black all up on my palette and we're just using that to kind of shadow it in and kind of give this guy some scale and some depth. Um, you can you know you can work in whatever color you want but a fun thing about working in this gray is that you just add a little bit of a little bit of black and that gives you a little bit of depth and shadow and you come back and add a little bit of light and that lets you kind of come up on the top. It's a real easy color to fade with back and forth. And we're just trying to add detail to these robots. You know, you can start thinking about these robots in different pieces. For example, this here is a sort of a pivot where these two pieces are going to come together. There's going to be all sorts of hydraulics and gears in there making that work. So by kind of indicating that, by changing the, the difference of the lines, adding a little bit of detail, you can make your viewer see that too. And it's fun to work in, in steps. So you just come in and maybe you put in a few lines here and that, that represents an old steel panel. And then you, you can drop in a few little more details to kind of like, for example, those bolts on the elbow show us, okay, that's how it's swiveling down there. I'm going to let you, you think, is that, a, is that a, some sensor equipment down there, a bunch of cameras? Is that a speaker device so this creature can communicate with us? I don't know. Uh, but, but that's the kind of thing that, that whoever built this robot knows, you know, and so maybe when you're painting creatures like this, you can think, how, how much in depth do you want to go with it? How much detail do you want to give to this robot? Now, for me, I'm thinking I don't know a whole lot about this robot, just what I see, but I, I got a lot more feelings about that energetic orb giant. I think that thing, uh, I think that thing's a real force to be reckoned with, and I think it's a good thing we got this containment unit put up on it. But a containment unit is only going to work if we got plenty of uh, plenty of pieces to it. You know, you got to do careful fabrication. So I'm just coming in here and putting in some highlights to show that that metal, that metal's gleaming stuff. It's well taken care of. You know, this this kind of indicates a different panel over here to show. Oh, we're not going to let this thing escape. No, no way, no how. This thing's been, you know, put under protocol with some people. And uh, they're going to make sure that it kind of goes where we wish, doesn't destroy so much. Maybe they could find a way to tap that energetic power and, and use it how they see fit. You can see here I'm just, again, bringing attention to the different components of the machine. Now if he's got these ball joints on one arm, we're going to want to have those ball joints on the other arm. Coming on through here, 
just following that pattern to show uh, all the all the different parts all coming together now now maybe your robot doesn't have these ball joints maybe your robot comes together in big sort of nesting sprockets with some kind of shoulder pad things up top that's fine you can do that maybe your robot has wheels down below or legs down below you can do anything you want a fun thing about these robots is that we've all seen so many of them that you know you put in a little bit of the color and the hard angles and you can you can just start to imagine you know whatever you kind of want and that's just going to be living there on your canvas that's what I want to do for you is let you know your imagination can come to a canvas like this you don't have to go down that path of digital art and trying to make everything perfect and trying to undo this and undo that there can be a real joy to sitting down with some paint and just seeing what you can do with it you know practicing all you need to do is be a little better than you were last time and uh, it's it's greatly rewarding I love it so much just spending time working on these and thinking about you know where this guy's from how he's been moving through the landscape let's give him some little legs down here instead of wheels let's give him some little pointy kind of you know little centipede legs little spider legs little critty crawly kind of things you know I mean he's gonna be heavy right I imagine that orb doesn't weigh much at all this robot is mostly mostly using its energy to be able to do as it wishes uh, I'm thinking he's got some sort of autonomy in there but Maybe there's some programming that prevents him from being able to destroy like he could before. But he doesn't weigh a whole lot, so this robot can just uh, can just scurry him through the countryside as he sees fit. So again, we're just putting in more, more highlights on the top. We're thinking that that light is coming up there from the galaxy. So the tops of these arms should be a little brighter. The bottom should be a little darker. And the more you can fade that effect, the more... Uh, the better that transition is going to look and your style can decide how much you want to do uh, do you want it to fade perfect do you want to get a gleaming line on there or do you just want to put some light on top to show where it's glinting off the steel that's what's fun about working with these create these these creations these kaiju these monsters is if you paint what you see then everyone gets to see that version of you it's not about a level of uh, of uh, perfection it's not about achieving what others have achieved it's just about doing doing it for yourself and sometimes that means taking risks like right here we're gonna go in and put in this again some sort of a containment device is what I'm trying to get across this is some sort of a a natural beast but then people have come along and captured it somehow and whether they're helping it or hurting it I'm not so sure about that quite yet but I do know that it's uh, being being controlled right so that kinda comes in and gives us a a top sort of like a clamp on top of there but also gives this character who's basically a giant ball gives him a little bit of more expression looks a little bit more intentional now that he's got a little bit of an eyebrow I'm trying to think about making him expressive but at the same time putting in more robot pieces so antennas bits of plate mail you know any sort of story you tell is gonna be what makes these things fun Maybe he has these antenna because he needs to communicate with the home base. Maybe instead of building up a big fence across the landscape with antennas here, you can just tell him, hey, you're getting too close to that cattle over there. Or, oh, hey, that's a nice waterfall. We'd appreciate if that one didn't just get destroyed. All right, now comes the tricky part, I'm trying to put in the, the center of the eye. You can see here we did have a little bit of a mistake, and we're going to be working through that. There's a gob of gray paint on the side of my brush, but... uh and that just slipped off on there and because the bottom layer is still wet I can't do much about it if I if I try to suck it out of there with a paper towel oh it's just gonna get all kinds of messed up so when these things happen you gotta decide what to do and this is one of the challenges of working with real paint instead of and you know a, a medium that you can undo is if you make a mistake like this you gotta decide how am I gonna fix it am I gonna try to scrub it clean and go back in Am I going to paint over the top of it? Am I going to try to use this in the design? I liked most of that eye, so I'm putting in some reflections to give us a glint, make it look a little rounder. And then here's where I tried something real silly. I tried to give it some more, a little bit extra, like plating or something to kind of block off that eyeball. But, uh, you know, ultimately I don't think that was a successful, successful plan. So what I did is I took a break. I went and you can see I put in this tree up here, worked a little bit down on the reflection, 
And then I came back here and I said, you know what? We got to go over what we did before. Those little plates were not working. So let's just come in here and and instead of uh, that same gleam with the, we got with those big smooth brush strokes, we're just moving right along and we're going to say, let's give them a more modeled effect. You know, with these smaller brush strokes, we can give it a more almost a, kind of a fleshy, meaty kind of look. So he's still an enormous orb giant, but... Now he sort of has a different a different appearance to him. And a fun thing about doing this, well, coming back in and fixing something like this you mess up, is that you can uh, you can change a little bit. You know, you can bring that eye in. You can bring in that plate. You change the shape. You know, and it looks like that piece was done. You, you might be able to think which one's in the background or whatever, but it's all paint, so you can come in and fix things as you see wish as you see fit. Of course, the better you are at matching color, uh, better better for you. I'm not so great at that, so anytime I come in and do a new effect, I'm always trying to go cover the entire area. Down here, those trees, sometimes it's good to take a break from what you're working on and move to another part of the painting. So those trees there, I just added a little bit of highlight to them just to make it pop a little bit. And of course, we want those there blocking him to push him further back in the painting. We want depth, and the only way to achieve depth and scale is by pushing, putting things in front of our kaiju to make them look like they are in the part of the landscape we want them to be. If he was up by this tree in the front here, he'd look much too big. But since he's out there behind that horizon, well, he looks big as the sky. And that's, uh, that's kind of the, the effect I'm going for, what I want to see when I paint. And if you're painting with me, I hope that's something you're interested to, because that is something I'm always trying to work out with is scale and how do we make these guys really tower over the world, but at the same time not look so big that you can't fathom it, you know. So I like this guy. He's, what, four or five times as tall as those trees? That's, uh, that's a big boy, but not so big. We can't, don't know what to do with them. And once you work in another layer, you can always go back and add a little bit more detail here and there. If that's something that appeals to you. There can be something very satisfying about finishing a part of the painting and just having it done. Like I did with the sky. Um, I feel like that turned out real well, so I'm not going in back and touching it. With this robot, well, I want him to kind of have some expression, so we're coming back in with those giving them little teeth in there, or maybe those are sensors or something, you know, you let, you, you, you come up with a story, but you let your viewer have a story too, and that, that you accomplish that by adding all these little details and fun little bits. Now, I'm really liking this reflection, so I wanted to come in and show you how I'm doing that. I'm just putting in different layers of paint, and I had more yellow in it before, because my original version had more yellow, but now I'm coming in with the red. And just scratching it back and forth, trying to keep it right under that eye, and using these horizontal strokes to show uh, that it's water, right? So there's our pupil. Again, just scratching it in. If it's uh, too much of a blob, it's not going to look right, so we want to change that as much as we can. Um, and then we're just going to add a little touch of white there. And I think that's about where we're going to stop for today. Thank you so much for joining us on Painting Our Monsters and Painting That Energetic Orb Giant, or EOG. Uh, I hope you had a good time, and remember, our world is what we make it.